He is the founder of the Global United Fellowship, a new movement that's bringing spiritual leaders from all over the world together. Bishop Neil Ellis joins us now via Skype. Welcome, Bishop. How are you, sir? I am doing very well today. I'm here in beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. It's like paradise here. <laughs> I see you, you guys from, from Bahamas. You like to rub it in our faces that uh, God lives there in so much sunshine and sea and no problems. Well, you know, I guess it's just confidence. It's, you know, it's obvious that he lives here and we are delighted to be li living here among him. <laughs> Let's talk about your new organization because many people will know you uh, and your affiliations with or other organizers for, for many years. I mean, high ranking in some of them. Uh, what's this new organization and, and what was the genesis of it? Well, uh, the, the genesis of this is a group of pastors coming together, feeling an, uh, a call to do something fresh and new. And of course, uh, I was not on that page at that time, but uh, 30 of them came into the Bahamas and spent two days here with me. And after some time of uh, prayer and discussion and just contemplation and reflection, uh, the Global United Fellowship was born, and uh, it was born with, uh, with five objectives. One, to unite uh, a segment of the body of Christ. Of course, we believe that the body is a little bit disjointed right now, but um, we know uh, that there's no one person or one organization that can unite the entire body. Mm. But I believe with all my heart now that in this season, God is raising up some people who are going after the uniting of segments of the body. And I think, I think our assignment is uh, to the Protestants, the Apostolics, the Charismatics, uh, the Pentecostals, and the Independents. But Bishop, uh, let, me, let me ask you, sorry to interrupt, let me ask you though, sorry. because uh, there's someone watching, a pastor is watching this in, in Ghana, or even in Estonia, and, and, and I'm wondering, uh, what does the organization have to, I hear you about unity and bring people together, but what uh, practical things can they get from the leadership of Neil Ellis and others in the organization that makes a difference to them in a crying Ghana or even next door to you in Jamaica? Well, uh, that, that, the next prong was help us to answer that because uh, the next item is to equip. We believe that there are many, many persons in the body now serving in areas of leadership uh, for which they're not really fully equipped. And uh, while we have no intentions of being critical or condemning, we believe it's our assignment to stand alongside of them and to equip them or give them assistance in qualifying themselves uh, so they can be better equipped to serve in the areas that they're in. So that's a major component there, uh, educating our people. Uh, and uh, we believe that uh, we have a program now with, in conjunction with uh, several universities and uh, seminaries, along with, with uh, a major television network, uh, that we're going to be able to do some things that no matter where you are in the world, you'll be able to benefit from them. And quite frankly, Ghana is already on board. Wow. Uh, uh, so, so is Johannesburg, so is Cape Town, so is uh, Liberia, and uh, so is uh, one or two other areas of, of, uh, of Africa. Let me, let me get, get on a personal uh, note, Bishop, because you've been in the ministry for a minute and you've traveled extensively around the world and you've seen in recent times some of the, uh, uh, the car crashes we've had uh, in ministry that's very public. But for sure. Neil Ellis, as you're coming to this new chapter in your life, what are some of the things uh, that you've learned from, some of, some of the decisions that you've made that you thought, you know, if I had it to do again, I wouldn't do this. And this is, these are some of the things I wanna tell these guys around the world watch out for this well first of all we are supposed to as members of the body of christ be able to learn from uh the errors of others uh there's no need to repeat these same errors and uh, so at the birth of our fellowship one of the first things we did was uh created the uh, a group called the council of apostolic fathers 
And uh, that's the group that the presiding bishop, who is myself at this point, is answerable to. These are all other presiding bishops. They are matured men of God who have been uh, in ministry, all of them, for more than 30 years. And uh, what, what I have seen happen, my friend, is a lot of people who have ascended to high offices did not surround themselves with people to whom they are accountable Consequently, mm. they made bad decisions without consultation. Mm. And uh, that, that's the purpose of this board, to give me an opportunity uh, outside of the people that I'm serving to be able to go to a group to uh, consult if I'm not sure about something, if I just want to uh, get some other support on a decision that I want to make, any critical moves that I need to make in the fellowship that could ultimately affect the body and the fellowship, this group is there to, uh, as it were, bring me in line. Now, Bishop, um, uh, over the time uh, in your organization, I guess it will grow larger and larger. Um, a young man who's coming into ministry, who's felt betrayed by different systems and is, is looking for help, um, how do they uh, come into your system and still be given the attention that one person needs? Because once it gets big, you think, well, you know, I might just get lost in this new organization. Uh, that's a very good question, and uh, and that's a question that we have to answer in the Global United Fellowship because uh, we are less than a year old, and it has it has already gotten big, and so we have to be very cautious. And uh, I think the theme, as I will, as I mentioned uh, last week during the gathering. Uh, the basis of our fellowship the, in order to avoid issues like this is we've got to remember that we are more than a fellowship, but we're family. And so mm. family has an obligation to look out for one another, to uh, kind of guide one another along, uh, to help others in areas of weaknesses where you are strong. And uh, so this whole concept of building a family as opposed to a fellowship uh, is a way of opening the doors. Even in my sermon, the message that I addressed that night, I talked about how it's important for us to leave nobody behind. Wow. Uh, we cannot, we cannot uh, move in this area of ranks and titles and colors as a means of being a process for identifying who we are. All of us are God's children. And the one word that kept coming up is this word different. We've got to be different this time. Bishop, thank you so much. And hopefully we'll find some more time so we can dig into this matter a bit more. But thank you for joining us from uh, Nassau and Bahamas. What a privilege it has been. And wherever you are in the world, I welcome you to the Bahamas. It's like paradise on this side. <laughs>